I have to admit, sometimes I really do love blogging about the new. Yes, there is sometimes that I love to verbally articulate about the Gingrich. That being said, I came across an article today entitled, Only Gingrich Has Made Obama Squirm. This was posted on Real Clear Politics. It was a linked up story on the Washington Times by a gentleman whose name is Dr. Milton Wolf. When I read the first couple of paragraphs, I had to admit I thought I was listening to John Lithgow read Gingrich's press release. This wouldn't be the first time the media missed the real story. In the wake of a split Super Tuesday, Mitt Romney and Rick Santorum scored wins against each other. But it was former Speaker Newt Gingrich who single-handedly drove our Kenyan import into panic mode. Mr. Romney deserves enormous credit for the success in the early primaries, but the undeniable fact remains that he has not demonstrated the ability to win a race without vastly outspending his opponent, often by 5 to 1, dare I even say 12 to 1. He will not enjoy this luxury against the sitting president and the billion dollar Obama machine. Veteran political writer John Fund says Republicans are fooling themselves if they ignore this sobering reality. Now after reading the article, just those first two paragraphs, I decided to click on the full story, and when I did, I have to admit, I was having a damn good time reading it. When I tell you that this man puts it right down, I mean, he lays down, he lays down, he lays the smack down on Obama. And then there was Newt Gingrich, the Lazarus of the presidential campaign as the Drudge Report recently called him. Ready to rise once again, while the mainstream media stayed focused on the game of checkers between Mr. Romney and Mr. Santorum, Mr. Gingrich forced our Kenyan into, into an astonishing game of chess. In a 30-minute video tile, 250 per gallon gasoline, energy independence and jobs. Mr. Gingrich unveiled his vision for the Renewed America Prosperity Center around oil and natural gas production. He demonstrated his unparalleled insight into the intersection of energy, security and prosperity. Mr. Gingrich rightly declared that never again should a American president bow before a Saudi king. Meanwhile, Mr. Obama, stung by his recent half-billion-dollar failed cylindra boomdoggle, began floating his latest green fantasy of harvesting algae to cure the pain at the pump. Panicked by Mr. Gingrich, Mr. Obama was forced off his game and repeatedly tried to respond, only making matters worse for himself. He st stated, stay true to his Democratic anti-energy agenda and mocked Republicans for wanting to drill for new oil. This made the president the butt of a joke for uh, Jay Leno on The Tonight Show. Democrats claim new drilling for oil won't help us for at least 10 years, but haven't they been saying that now for more than 10 years? Mr. Obama boasts that the oil production is up under his administration. True, but only because our Kenyan import hasn't yet stopped production of privately owned land. Mr. Gingrich cut right through his profound dishonesty under our Kenyan import because he is so anti-American energy. We have actually had a 40% reduction in development of offshore. And we have had a 40% reduction in the development of oil on federal lands, Mr. Gingrich pronounced. So in the areas 
he controls production is down. And in the areas that it is hard for free enterprise stuff, where people get rich, production is up. So he is now claiming credit for an area he can't control in order to have a stink. He is actually for what he opposes. Mr. Gingrich reduced the once competent, yes we can, 2008 version of Mr. Obama into a backpedaling, it's not my fault, 2012 version. I'll, you know, I'll stop and I'll link up the rest of this article on that one. Absolutely fantastic. Yeah, I do. I love that line. Mr. Gingrich reduced the once competent, yes we can, 2008 version of Mr. Obama into a backpedaling, it's not my fault, 2012 version right before the eyes of a defense that Mr. Obama dissembled. We now know there's no silver bullet that will bring down gas prices or reduce our dependence on foreign oil overnight. Wait, what about the algae? <laughs> Man, I'm Tim Donovan. I'm on the right. I want to thank Dr. Milton Wolf for writing one hell of a great article and giving me a few chuckles. And actually pointing out one of the good characteristics of Newt Gingrich. He sure in hell can make Obama squirm. Well, I'm Tim Donovan and I'm on the right. You want to know where I am? Just look to the right. You're going to see me on the right side of Kenny Bob.